Today, let's talk about a structural engineering concept called the load path. Let's say we have this simple structure that experiences a 100 pound per square foot factored load that acts on the top decking. For a simple structure like this one, we know the load path will start at the top decking, then the load travels through each beam, then it ends at each column. Now, the key question is this, for this 20 foot by 10 foot structure, how much of that load is going to act on each beam and how much of the load is going to act on each column to answer this we have to cover the idea of tributary area let's change our view and look at the top view and focus on the beams so we have the left beam the middle beam and the right beam the tributary area for the left beam will be the one shown in blue and notice it has something called the tributary width of five feet the tributary area for the very far right beam is actually the same as the tributary area for the left beam and that will also have a tributary width of 5 feet and the area that's left over will be the tributary area for the middle beam as shown in pink and that has a tributary width of 10 feet. We can visualize these beam tributary areas from a different view as follows. We have the left beam tributary area the right beam tributary area, and the middle beam tributary area. After determining the tributary area for each beam, which gives us that crucial tributary width of each beam, we can now determine the distributed load that acts on each beam. And in this case, we will focus on the outside beam. Keep in mind, we can apply the same steps for the middle beam and the right beam. To find that distributed load, which will always be a uniform distributed load, we will take the original uniform service load that's given to be 100 PSF and we multiply that by the tributary width. And in this case, for the outside beam, it will be 5 feet. So we get a uniform distributed load of 500 pound per foot acting on the outside beam. We can break down this distributed load into a single concentrated point load that acts at the center of the beam. To do this, we take the distributed load of 500 pound per foot we multiply it by the length of the beam, which is 10 foot in this case, and we get 5,000 pounds. That's a concentrated load acting at the center of the beam. Now this point load of 5,000 pounds that acts down must be resisted equally by the columns to maintain equilibrium. So the left column will supply 2,500 pounds and the right column will supply a reaction of 2,500 pounds. And ultimately, this same 2,500 pounds is the load acting in each column. Because as we know from Newton's third law, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And in this case, we have a reaction of 2,500 pounds, which turns into an action that acts at each column. 